My guest today is Dr. Hal Blattman, who is a founder and medical director of the Blattman Health and Wellness Center. He is also a nationally recognized specialist in treating myofascial pain. In today's episode, we talk about how to get out of physical pain, how to help you realize that you don't have to live in pain, and that pain doesn't necessarily come from where you think. Welcome to Lifeology. Hey, good morning, James. Thank you so much for having me here today. It is my pleasure. My listeners may not remember this, but you've been on my show a couple times already, and I've learned so much from you. So the listeners who haven't heard you before, I know they're going to learn so much more about where pain typically comes from, and you are the expert on that. So let's jump right into it. That is, you know, when you and I were talking in the pre-call, you were telling me about some interesting things about all the pain we have, and a lot of it happened when we were kids. And, you know, the first time yes. something happened, when Most someone picked you up. Injuries. And, yeah, that's so fascinating to me. Let, tell me the tell injuries me that, that we have that... that- most of the injuries that we have that cause our pain started in childhood. The injuries that cause our headaches started in childhood. The injuries that cause our low back pain started in childhood. And we're misdirected by our nervous system as to where our pain comes from and what causes it. For example, your headache. Your headache hurts in your head. You think it comes from your head. You go to a head doctor. Your low back pain, you think, is coming from your lower back because that's where you feel it. But part of the reason that we treat pain and we're so confused by it and we can't help people in so many ways make it go away is we don't understand really where it comes from and we mm. don't understand the injuries that cause it. And once yeah. you do, everything changes and most pain can go away. When you talk about injury, you know, I, I think about when I was a child, I'm like, well, I, I didn't have any injury. Can you walk me through that? Because an injury may have different meanings for certain people. So one of the things to do is to take your fingers between your thumb and your index finger and get a big bite of this muscle. It's a big, okay. thick muscle, maybe an inch in diameter. Bring your thumb across it and see if you can appreciate that there's ropes and cords in this muscle mm -hmm. that somewhere between the top and the bottom, they're surprisingly tender. So can the you, people can who you appreciate are, that? Yes, but the people who aren't uh, viewing this, but they're just listening to this, can you give a bit more demonstration so that if they hear this on the sure. radio? The, sternal, the sternocleidomastoid muscle goes right next to your windpipe toward the side okay. in front of your neck. Okay, I it's, feel that. Um, about an inch in diameter, and it goes from the back of your head behind your ear down to the front and the top of your collarbone, close okay. to the middle of the front of your neck. Okay. And that muscle has cords and ropes inside it and you can feel those cords and ropes and where they're most dense and tightest that's where the fibers of the muscle are kind of glued and stuck together and that's mm. where they're really tender and it's variable because everybody's a little bit different mm -hmm. and then touch the top of your collarbone and push down bring your finger across the top and you'll find little irregularities right on the collarbone that are also surprisingly mm -hmm. tender the collarbone yeah. area that's tender is one of the injuries that causes those ropes and cords in that muscle of your neck. And if you have trouble finding it, it's called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And it's easy to look up and see a diagram of it to, to find mm -hmm. out what I'm talking about. Well, this collarbone is the injury that causes the cords in your neck. How did that happen? Well, the first time it happened, you were an infant and somebody picked you up by your shoulders and forgot to bring your head. Oh. Another time it happened, you were in nursery school, and some little kid came up behind you, shoved you to the ground, snapped your head back, and tore mm. where the strings and cords that go through this sternocleidomastoid muscle and hold it together weave through the cover over your collarbone before they come down into your chest. Take another one. Oh. Take your hand and get a big bite of your pec muscle. Get your fingers mm -hmm. under your armpit, bring your thumb across the front of your chest, feel the ropes and cords in that muscle mm -hmm. that are also surprisingly tender. Well, you got mm -hmm. those the same way you injured the neck. You got them when you got up the floor and pushed that little kid back. Or maybe when you uh, did too many push-ups in high school to win the presidential <laughs> fitness award. <laughs> I remember those. <laughs> Here's another one. This muscle. Yes, this mm -hmm. muscle across the top of your shoulders. Really tight really tender. People who are under a lot of stress find that muscle is even more mm -hmm. tense and more tight. Mm -hmm. That also comes from injuries. You're strong uh -huh. enough to contract this muscle, to lift and carry your book bag, your briefcase, hold up the world. Don't we do a little bit of that mm -hmm. as we get older? But where the muscle anchors peripherally and where it anchors centrally isn't strong enough to hold you together when you pull that hard 
and that muscle tears from both Contract. ends, oh, just like this one slipped. And that's oh. why these are tight. So what's the ultimate cause of that? Well, let's look at a couple diagrams. Take a look at this one. So here is one end of the injury. Here are mm -hmm. the kinks and the strings of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Here's another right. end of the injury. This is also often tender. This is the migraine that comes from here. Interesting. The migraine so, doesn't come from your head. It interesting. Comes from so my, partly from my, here. my listeners who aren't able to see this, he's shown a diagram right now that's given us an example of what he just talked about. And you can see where along the, and I'm going to use layman's terms, along the side of your neck um, where the kinks are and then how that actually causes pain up in the back of your head um, or also around your, the migraine around your eye as well. And also the, the, the clavicle area. Or and across your forehead. Mm. Wow. Here's, here's the muscles in the top of the shoulders. See how they send pain right up the back of the neck. Yeah. So your neck wow. pain okay. isn't necessarily coming from your spine, your disc, hmm. your nerve. So I put all this together and coined mm -hmm. the five rules to how to understand pain and how to make it go away. Okay. Walk us through this. All right. Rule number one, you can't believe the pain comes from where you feel it. Your headache does right. not come from your head, doesn't come from your blood vessels, doesn't come from your nerves. The pain in your left arm, for example, that could mm -hmm. be your heart attack. We're, that's what we were taught. And the pain yeah. in your knee, most of it does not come mm -hmm. from your joint. Talk to your friends who've had their knee replaced especially your older ones, how many of them, the knee still hurts and there's no joint there. Oh, that's a good point. That's a really good point. And yeah. So where would it come from, from in the, the knee? Joint. Yeah. So when the knee, uh, what's, what's the knee it comes from the thigh muscle. So there's Jesus. two things we can't protect. Okay. We can't protect bullheadedness and we can't <laughs> protect true. ourselves from impact. Okay. Bullheaded is the, the man who's too old to be doing this anymore is curling with his biceps way too much weight, decides oh, to do one more too. rep and shreds his biceps from his body and wears it as Popeye either mm. up or down on his arm. You can't yeah. protect that. The other thing you can't protect is impact. And where did we get a lot of the impact that we grew up with that has turned into the lower back pain as we get older? We jumped out of trees. We jumped down the steps. Mm -hmm. We jumped off the swing set, and many of us also jumped off the roof. I remember you would be amazed course, how many allegedly. people remember. <laughs> you either That's led, you really. followed, or you watched all the other kids jump off the yeah. roof. Yeah, and when you I land, my ones who watched. You, <laughs> yes, and when you land, you injure the the attachments and tendons that hold mm. your butt muscle to your thigh bones mm -hmm. and also to your pelvis. Well, for mm. people with lower back pain, their lower back is mostly not tender. The tenderness is mostly in their butt, and that's where the injuries oh. are that cause most of the lower back pain later. So that's part of these five rules. So rule number one, you can't believe the pain comes from where you feel it. Mm -hmm. Your low back pain is mostly not coming from your lower back, which is why all of the treatment for that only works a little bit. Interesting. Second rule. It's not important what you think the pain feels like. We were taught when we went to school that there's a difference in cause between the pain sensation of burning and numbness and aching um, and all those different descriptions that we have. But truth be told, our brain can't really tell the difference between mm. numbness, tingling, burning, itch, tickle, sharp, dull, achy, stabbing, and even sexual arousal comes from the same really? nerves the same skin goes to the same part of our brain, and we can confuse all of it. For example, Interesting. Mike Tyson bites your ear off. It hurts. Mm -hmm. Your honey touches your ear. You have a mm -hmm. much different reaction through your entire biology. Mm -hmm. And then you find yeah. out it doesn't even have to be your ear. Interesting. So where we're taught that all these sensations have different meanings for causation, none of them do. Our brain confuses all of them, and they don't really make a difference. Rule number three. So what, would, what would be the point of then, or in respect to the other, other practitioners who have you quantify what it feels like? What, what, what's the point of that? You know, we're taught that it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I teach that it doesn't really matter. You can't mm -hmm. tell the difference. But as you yeah. get better, 
the colors or the sensations that you you interpret and feel they mm-hmm. change on the way to pain free interesting okay okay so every patient of mine colors a pain diagram on every visit you actually shade in with colored pencils what you feel interesting and so okay. yellow for numbness and tingling and blue for pain and red for burning and green for cramping and some people have to make up another color yeah but we so all redefining the colors what that means. change yeah we and so I look at the pattern of pain and look at the fascia and how the fascia through our lifetime has been injured. Walk us through the fascia because I, I, I know what that is, but some people I may not be familiar with the fascia or my mm-hmm. fascia is. Can you explain that? So if you have a steak, an ordinary steak mm-hmm. on the table in front of you, instead of cooking it and cutting it and eating it, you grab it by the edges and gently pull it apart. If you have a microscope, you can see a thin film around every cell a thin mm-hmm. film around every muscle fiber. With your naked eye, can't you see the film that goes around the stake and through mm-hmm. the stake to hold it together? Mm-hmm. That's the fascia we're talking about. Those are the strings, so to speak, and cords inside your muscles that are holding you together. They also hold your organs in place. They surround your brain, hold it in place. They keep your heart in its position and still allow it to move. Mm. And they hold That's pelvic great. organs in place. And as the fascia loosens with time, the pelvic organs sink a little bit Mm -hmm. and the breast tissue sinks a little bit and all other tissues start to do that Mm -hmm. also as we get older. Well, it's the fascia that's stretching out that holds us together on the inside. And 80% of the information that comes to our brain from our periphery comes from the nerve endings in between these strings and cords of fascia that go through these muscles. And they're telling you these nerve endings. They're telling you Mm -hmm. about the kinks in the muscle. That's how you know the sternocleidomastoid is tender when you touch it. And they're telling you about where the muscle anchors and holds you together that's injured, which is why the top of your collarbone is sore, which is why you have um, the tenderness out over the sides of your hips. And your doctor might diagnose a bursitis. It's Mm -hmm. not a bursitis. It's a tendon injury Mm -hmm. that started when you jumped out of trees. Mm -hmm. And wow. that's the injury to your butt muscle, like this collarbone is the injury to this neck muscle. And just like you have these cords and ropes in your neck, you have these cords and ropes in your butt muscle that started started when you were a child jumping down the steps. Why is it that so, some professionals, if I may cut you off for one second, why is it that some professionals, they they would would diagnose it as, let's say, as bursitis and not really look at the myo, the myofascial or the fascial aspect of it. Why, why was there a disconnect there in some ways? I remember we, were never taught. Today, mm. we were never taught how to touch. We were taught uh. to do your diagnosis by MRI scan, CT scan, and lab test. I'll, I'll ask most of our listeners, if you've had pain for a long time and you've been in treatment for a long time, has your doctor ever really touched you? Hmm. The neurologist who's treating your headache, have they ever touched you? The orthopedic surgeon treating your lower back pain, have they ever really touched you? Besides poking pins and measuring range of motion, we weren't taught how to touch. And by and large, we don't really understand what that touch means. Hmm. So we're at a deficit when it comes Mm -hmm. to trying to figure out what's really going on. So that's why these five rules are so important. So... Rule number one, you can't believe where the pain, that the pain comes from where you feel it. Rule number two, it's not diagnostically important what the pain feels like. So if you can't believe where you feel it, and it's not important what it feels like, the only thing you can believe is what you can touch and feel. And where you are specifically tender, millimeter by millimeter, is where your strings are kinked and tied in knots and glued together, or where your strings attach and weave to hold you together. It's a weave. It's not an attachment. And you've injured Mm -hmm. many, many times. Rule number four, as you're examined in that fashion, the places where your biology is most tender represents the kinks and injuries that formed through your lifetime that generate most of the pain of which you are conscious. Interesting. Okay. So it's an amalgamation, a, a culmination of that. Got it. And then rule number five, better than 90% of the time across the board, as quickly as you unkink where the strings are tied together and as quickly as you heal how you anchor and hold together so you 
hold together when you pull and use that muscle, mm -hmm. the pain you thought you had will already be gone. Wow. Doesn't matter how long you've had it. Doesn't wow. matter where it is. Doesn't matter what you think your diagnosis is. Those five rules trump everything we were taught about pain. Interesting. So that's almost great because the prognosis then, yeah, it's great because the prognosis then is that whomever has had pain, you don't, like you said, don't have to live with the pain. So most what? people who have pain, most of that pain can go away most of the time. And here's part of the deal. You didn't know about this thing in your neck unless you have headaches until you touched it right now. You didn't know mm -hmm. about this thing on your collarbone. You didn't know about the kinks in your pec muscle. Maybe you did, mm -hmm. but most of the time you don't. Yeah. The point of this is nowhere do you need to be 100% perfect and 100% restored. All you really need to get out of pain is to be 99% ignorable everywhere. Mm. Just like you ignore these that you didn't know about, if you can ignore the ones that are causing the pain that you do know about, mm -hmm. or if they were toned down enough so that they weren't giving more input to your brain That's than the ones true. that you're ignoring, your pain is gone. Wow. So what, what are some techniques that or strategies people can, can do uh, even right now to help alleviate some of that? Well, you have these kinks in your muscles that are really tight. The fastest way to make that kink smaller is incredibly simple. Step on it, squish it, and physically force it to get smaller. Mm. So what do you do? You get a massage on your upper traps and somebody pushes and leans mm -hmm. on your kinks, makes them smaller, and your muscle is looser and you can move your head mm -hmm. better and that's the basics. And then after you lean on the muscle, so the, the ones that you can't reach, like on your shoulder blades and your butt muscle, we teach people how to use a little rubber ball and mm -hmm. massage the muscles with a That's ball. Nice. We describe that in my book, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. You can mm -hmm. do that multiple times a day. And then you need to stretch the muscle out. And this mm -hmm. is really, I think, revolutionary. All the stretches we were ever taught are pulling on the ends of our strings. Mm -hmm. If you were taught to stretch your neck, you were taught something like this, pulling mm -hmm. on the ends. If you were taught to stretch your hamstring, you were taught to bend over and reach toward your toes. Yeah. That pulls the muscle from the ends. Well, what I just showed you is that the pain comes from a kink, a knot in the middle of a shoelace. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you pull on the ends of the shoelace? Doesn't that knot get tighter? Yeah. Interesting. So the stretching that we've been taught doesn't work. Or it only works to a limited fashion sure. because you're not going to pull that kink apart from the ends. Mm -hmm. You're going to stretch mm -hmm. the edges of that muscle around the kink. And then the kink sees, hey, I've got room. I can recruit. I can get bigger. So overstretching uh, makes those kinks bigger and you end up in more pain. Wow. So is this where like um, so, the foam rolling, those types of things, is that where that? Where, where that foam rolling foam? doesn't stretch anything. Foam rolling oh. rolls over the muscle. It squishes oh. the knots, makes them smaller. Yeah. But you don't stretch anything by rolling over it. You don't stretch anything sure. by using the rubber ball. All you can do with that is squeeze the kinks and make them smaller. And believe me, everybody knows that works. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make it go away. If you're going to make it go away, you've got three things to happen. You've got to get your hands on the skin, and you've got to use the skin as a handle to force the strings in the muscle to unkink. So you slide. Three things need to, to happen. Okay. Yes. And three things need to happen. Number one, enough pressure to count. Number two, friction. Mm -hmm. You're going to use the skin as a handle to force the strings in the muscle underneath the skin to unkink. You put lotion on the skin, you slide right over it. You mm -hmm. roll right over it with your foam roller. You roll right over it with the rubber ball. You got to get your hands into it and force the skin. And then the third thing you need to do is you need to go slowly enough that the st strings in the muscle have time to unkink as you move, mm. or you went too fast and went right over it. And that is where real stretch happens. Wow. So the concept of stretching is that we have to think about that completely different. I have, um, and I'm sure many people, it's kind of like the new, the new thing, I put that in sailing quotes, of the, um, of the massage guns. Like I have one of those with the different attachments with that. I mean, obviously that's the same type of thing when it comes to like someone massaging your shoulders, but are those things good as well? Cause I have, it's almost like a spatula. One of the things that I have are the attachments yes. and it's, yeah, I, I push it, it, it and I slide. Yeah. Is that good? Is that would be something that would be a, 
Um, and, and that vibration oxygen. and that pressure mm-hmm. makes those kinks in the muscle smaller. And as nice. soon as you make them smaller, you have more motion, more flexibility, mm-hmm. and less pain. Yeah. It's not – unless you can grab the skin and force the skin to, to force the fascia underneath to unkink, the tool's not going to do what the hands can do. Yeah. But yeah, the tool also true. is such that your hands don't get tired. Your hands can handle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. Hands can handle what's going on. And – and your hands can feel it at the same time, where your mm-hmm. muscles can't quite um, – your hands can do much more than those tools. But then if you use the tools, your hands don't have to do the work, and they can take a break. Yeah. And the muscle used yeah. likes that vibration energy going after it like this. And it hurts so good. That's how you know it's the right <laughs> answer. It's a That's good right. hurt. Yeah. And everything yes. that you do to work on your body should also be a good hurt. When you strip your fascia with your hands, that should be a good hurt. It might be really uncomfortable, but it should be a good hurt. When you use the rubber ball and the foam roller, isn't that also a good hurt? I know there are times for me when I um when I like part of my like around my knee or something. If I can squeeze the skin, um, and I don't have much there, but when I squeeze it, I can feel it's almost like a I can't hear it, but it feels like a crackling or a, a, a not crackling. I don't know how to describe it. It's you can feel it. I guess a crackle. Like reminds me of um, like the bubble paper, uh, wrapping paper. Like it's you can I can feel it move, and it's always so interesting to me. If I was in fact I'm doing it right now, and I especially after a really hard workout, I could feel it, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's so odd to feel. So that's I mean I'm assuming that that is the fascia that I'm moving as I as I slide yes, down my that is the my fascia. Knee. Yes, and you'll find that the knee pain doesn't come from the joint as we spoke about. Mm-hmm. Where did those injuries come from? Same thing. You jumped out of trees. You kicked soccer balls. And the thigh muscle that goes across the front and inside of your thigh, those are the same injuries that you have in your upper shoulders, same injuries you have in your neck. But the muscles in the fascia of your thigh make your knee pain. Gotcha. Okay. Because I know I know someone specifically that I'm going to, once the show airs, I really want them to watch it, um, who's, who's hurt their knee as well. And so some of the things you're saying, this person has gone through physical therapy and they're still in pain. So I'm, I'm excited to... Sh- share this with them so they can figure out where that actually the pain actually originates and then from there if it's in their glute muscle or or the thigh muscle and then hopefully they'll be able to work those kinks out as well and then let's say you have knee pain and you go to your doctor Mm -hmm. and your doctor does an x-ray because that's what we're all very good at Mm -hmm. not to do and we see that your joint space is really narrow and we tell you that your knee joint is bone on bone and you need to replace the knee well If you can totally straighten your knee and you can bend that knee 90 degrees, no matter what your x-ray looks like, there is no possible way that joint is bone on bone. Mm, It's true. Makes sense. No possible way. The only way you can move from here to here is if you have enough cartilage in the joint to separate the bones to help them to move. It only takes two or three cell layers of cartilage thickness to get a joint to move Mm. without pain. Really? You now see or three cell layers on an x-ray those bones Mm -hmm. are going to look like they're right on top of each other Mm -hmm. because it takes a microscope to see cell layers yeah but two or three cell layers enough to make this joint move is enough cartilage to restore the joint regrow the cartilage and get it to come back we've been restoring cartilage and knee joints for more than 25 years it's not that difficult to do You can restore cartilage in many joints. Our body has the capacity to restore. And here's part of the issue. The orthopedic textbooks say that you're born with cartilage, you wear it out over time, and then you get your joint replaced, and you don't have anything to do in the middle of that. And I started to think several years ago, could that even be true? Does it even make sense? For example, we grow new skin every 7 to 10 days. Mm -hmm. We grow new bones. You hip, you, you can repair the fracture. We grow new parts of our body. Our brain can replace itself in 15 years. So does it make any sense that we can't regrow mm. cartilage to repair yeah. our bodies daily wear and tear? That's a great point. 
I mean, unfortunately, Dr. Yeah. Halblabin, our time is up. I've learned so much. I'm so excited to broadcast this to everybody. Uh, if my listeners want to find out more information about you and to purchase your book, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief, which I know has all, a lot of the information that we talked about today, where will they find this information online? This information is on our website, blattmanhealthandwellness.com. You can read a lot about um, how we think about pain, how we help pain go away, how, help we re, how we help regenerate tendons. You can grow a new rotator cuff tendon. You don't have to have it operated. You can That's grow amazing. new cartilage in a worn out joint. You can heal your muscles from the fascia injuries of a lifetime, and you can watch your pain go away as quickly as you make that happen. That is so inspiring and so exciting. Dr. Hal Batman, thank you so much for being a wonderful guest on my show today. I'm truly inspired and can't wait to learn more about this myself. Have a fantastic day. Thank you, James. Take care.